So our next speaker is Rick Erling. And Rick is the president of Business Growth US. This is a company that he has grown and that has morphed into, into sheer greatness. And I'll tell you, if you're looking for leads, he's your guy. He's written a wonderful book that came out while he was in the class, yay. And one of the things that I love so much about Rick is that in the course of this class, he has helped any number of his, his colleagues, his fellow class members, to help to build their businesses through what he does best, which is make contacts. We all treasure him. I know you will too. Help us welcome Rick Erling. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rick Erling, and I am elated at the opportunity given to me to speak before the U.S. Small Business Administration Emerging Leaders Class of 2014. I am humbled, and I count myself privileged by this opportunity. You know, over the last seven months together at the Bill Priest campus of El Central College, we've learned a lot. We've had well over 100 hours of professional training and peer-to-peer -peer counseling. We've gone deep into learning about the organizational framework required, the resource network, and the motivation required to build a sustainable business. If you ask me how to summarize that in one sentence, I could best sum it up by a quote from Henry Ford. A business that makes nothing but money is a poor business. If I could share just one example with you today, could I do that? In one of our first classes, our beloved instructor, Lynn O'Neill, dropped a large sheet of blank white paper on our desk with a box of crayons. She put it in front of each student and she assigned a problem to us, rather matter-of-factly, I might add, much like a grade school teacher. And Lynn said, you've got, I'm gonna give you this crayons and paper, you've got 15 minutes to sketch out your big vision for your business, and then you're gonna present it to each member of the class. You know, the most amazing thing about that assignment that Lynn assigned to me was that I can still remember the smell of that crayon, that box of crayons that I opened up. Crayola crayons they were. Anybody know the yellow and green box of Crayola crayons? Can anybody smell that right now? Yeah? A Yale University study on scent recognition ranked crayon smell as number 18 of the 20 most recognizable scents to adult Americans. Yeah, that's a fact. For most people, when you smell crayons as an adult, there's a cerebral flashback in your brain to childhood, and it makes you more creative. And that's exactly what Lynn did. She brought out the creativity in us. Yes, studies have proven that the simple smell of crayons increases creativity in the adult human brain. So here I am, 54 years old. In class, I felt free, I felt happy. But most of all, I felt the change in my own mindset. So how did this mindset apply to my learning in the Emerging Leaders Initiative? Well, it has everything to do with it. You see, because if you give a child a problem to solve, they come up with these really cool, unique solutions because they've got no statue of limitations. The ideas have a budget of 100 gazillion dollars. They can even sprinkle a little bit of magic on it to make sure it works just right. There's no hurdles such as cost, lawyers, limitations, or rules. So here we are in the classroom. We put together this big vision drawing. We present it to the class. And then over the next seven months together, we made that vision a reality. The ideas ended up being unique, amazing, fresh, and innovative. So the big aha moment for me in this whole class was that just yesterday I did my final presentation. And it was almost a mirror image of that crayon drawing that I did nearly seven months earlier. I thought that was really neat. The lesson learned in all this is a small business owner. The big takeaway here is a business owner wearing many hats and managing the day-to-day -day operations of your business. It's important to take a step back now and then. Look at that big picture and continuously work on your business rather than in your business. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly 
what this course was all about. If I could take a moment to thank the folks that brought us here today, I'd like to first thank my fellow graduates, the Small Business Administration, and the taxpayers, without whom there'd be no class and there'd be no cause for me to stand here before you today. I'd also like to take a moment to especially thank Lynn O'Neill, our instructor, who has guided us on this educational tour. <laughs> to Herb Austin, Billy Medina, Nancy Alvarez, Katrina Wade Miller, and everyone at Interise who all managed the program for the SBA, thank you for making this one of the most amazing experiences I have ever had. And to each and every guest speaker, the panelists, you've all made a great impact on our businesses, I thank you. And last but not least, thank you to our families and friends, sitting here or not today, your support means a lot to us. You've given us the strength, yep. You've given us the strength to get through those long days, late nights, and challenging assignments that Lynn put on us. As a final thought going forward, I leave you with a quote from Newton D. Baker. The man who graduates today and stops learning tomorrow is uneducated the day after. We, the class of 2014, are a powerhouse of creativity and innovation. The SBA has given us all the tools we need to be successful to take our businesses to the next level. But one thing was missing. So in closing, I am presenting a box of crayons to each one of my fellow classmates. I want you to always remember there are no limitations. Keep leveraging those budgets of one gazillion dollars and sprinkle a little bit of magic on from time to time. And most importantly, never stop learning, my friends. On behalf of the U.S. Small Business Administration Emerging Leaders Graduating Class of 2014, I wish you all the best in your future. Congratulations to each and every one of us.